Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to teach you five of my favorite text tricks that you can do using Fluid Engine Editor inside Squarespace. It's the latest editing experience that just came out in July of 2022. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash fluid to get the scoop. But if you're already using Fluid Engine and you want to learn about some of the cool things that it can do, let's hop on into my demo site and I'll show you. So here we are in my Squarespace website, and these are the five tricks I'm going to show you. We're going to talk about stretching content to fit. I'll show you how to create some unique background options, including a shape like this one. Then we'll check out the vertical alignment options available in Fluid Engine. You'll learn how to create full width scrolling text like this. And last but not least, I want to show you how to create layers with other content blocks to create unique layouts like this one. This is actually based off of a text block. Pretty cool, right? Let's hop into edit mode and I'll show you how all of this works. I'm going to click edit on the top left hand side of my site preview and now we can start working inside Squarespace. Now scrolling down here, let's go ahead and talk about this stretch to fit. If I double click on this to select the text inside, I want you to notice this is all paragraph two text, even though it's different sizes. That's because I have it set stretch to fit. If I go ahead and unhighlight that and we'll turn that off, you'll notice that everything goes back to the correct size for paragraph two. Let's go ahead and type some new text here. I'm going to say typing new text. And I put the word text on its own line. Again, we're in paragraph two. We can change this to a different font size, like maybe heading two. There we go, that's what that looks like. But if I set this to stretch to fit, let's go ahead and highlight all of it, stretch to fit, and now you'll see that each line is going to stretch all the way to the far right-hand side of this content block. Now, if we go ahead and just click on the block and change the size, I'm pressing control arrow on my keyboard. If you're on a Mac, press command. We'll scroll to the right and we'll give Squarespace a second to resize this text for us. And there we go, it's even bigger than it was before. So that's stretch to fit. Now, if you give this a try and you're not a fan, you can easily just highlight the actual text you wanna change and turn it off. Now, scrolling back up here, I wanted to show you this number five, this is a heading one text. However, I have it set stretch to fit. So it's going to take up all of this space. This text here is also heading one, but these are two different text box that I use stretch to fit to create this unique effect. All right, let's scroll down here and talk about our background options. Using Fluid Engine, you can give text a background. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this block. Now, if you press enter on your keyboard or click on this icon right here, that will take you to the text block editor. Here, you can toggle on a background, change the padding and the corner radius. I've added a corner radius here that curves these edges in by 90 pixels on the top left, 15 on the top right, 90 on the bottom right and 15 on the bottom left. We can have them all the same. If I click on this, I'll just enter 30, for example. Or if you don't want it rounded at all, just change it to zero. And again, if you click this, we can make these individual changes that we want to see, creating this kind of leaflet shape that I have here. I believe I had this set to 15, so we'll go ahead and change that back because I liked the way that looked. There we go. Now down here, we have padding. I have this set to large. You can select medium and small, but check it out. These three dots right here allow you to adjust the top and bottom separately from the left and the right. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Lots of cool stuff to play around with there. Now scrolling down here, I have that same background option here, but I want you to notice each one of these is the same size, each one of these text blocks. If I click on one, you'll see this button right here. This is how I change the vertical alignment. This is set to align at the top. This one over here is set to align at the bottom. And this one here is set to align in the middle. Now, if I click on this and I decide to change my mind, we'll go ahead and place this one in the middle. And we'll go ahead and place this one in the middle and check it out. Vertical alignment options. Again, click on the text box, click on this option and select top, middle or bottom. And you'll be able to change the alignment of the content inside that block. Scrolling down to our next option here, I have a full width scrolling marquee. I'm going to go ahead and create a new section so I can show you how I did that. I'll select add section, we'll add a blank one. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this section so it really stands out from everything else. We'll pick one of my darker colors here, there we go. Now, if you don't see that grid when editing, just press G on your keyboard and you'll see it. I'm going to add a block and we're going to add the scrolling marquee, there we go. 
So we'll just leave the default text there. And what I'm going to do is click on it. And then I'm going to grab the side here. You see the square right in the middle. I'm going to grab that and pull it all the way over to the left and pull it all the way over to the right. Now I got this one in the center of my actual banner there. You can place it however you'd like, but if you want to recreate this effect I have here, you need to hop into your edit section option. Go ahead and toggle off fill screen. That'll remove the padding from the top and the bottom. I'm going to reduce this row count. Now you can leave it at two if you want or leave it at three to give it a little bit of more space. I left mine at three. So then I could take this and increase its width, increase its height just a little bit. There we go. So now it's perfectly centered with the text there. You can have this be in two rows or however many you'd like for the type of font that you have. I'm pressing G on my keyboard to turn the grid off. And now we can see that full width scrolling marquee. Alrighty, last but not least, how to create layers with other content blocks. This right here is a text block and I've added a button and an image on top of it. Let's go ahead and add a new section and create the same look. I'll select add section. We'll add a blank one. And again, I'm going to select edit section and we'll go ahead and change up the colors so it stands out compared to everything else. There we go. Now, the first block I want to add is going to be the lowest layer. That'll be my text block. I just clicked on the content block and I'm dragging it over here. Let's go ahead and change its size. We'll make it pretty big and pretty wide. And we will add some custom text. Now I'm going to change this so it's a little bit bigger. All right. And then we need to add that background color. If you remember, when we clicked on the text block, we can either click this icon or hit enter on your keyboard, and that will give you the option to toggle on a background. I just realized the background color for my text block here is the same as this background color for my page section. So let's go ahead and hop into our site styles menu, and I'll show you how to change that. That's pretty important, isn't it? I'm going to click on this paintbrush icon right here to open up my site styles menu. It's a quick way to navigate there. And here I'll select colors. And the color theme we're using here is bright one. So I'm going to click into bright one. And this is a quick way, just a pro tip, how to narrow down this list. I'm just going to click on my text block right here. There we go. And now I can change the background color. Let's go ahead and make it a dark background color. And we'll go ahead and make the text, large text on a background, be a solid white. So it'll really stand out. There we go. Okay. Now we can see what we're working with here. I'm going to go ahead and close this. We'll hop back into edit mode. And I'll scroll down so we're in this page section. Let's go ahead and add a button and an image as well. I'm going to select add block and we'll pull a button over here. And let's drag that button over to the left. There we go. Now it's in line with our text there. Now, if your button and your text is not aligned, don't forget if you hop into edit mode, for this text block, you can change the padding manually. If I click these dots right here, I can scoot the left and the right over a little bit to make it line up exactly the way I want it to with my button. I'll go ahead and click on medium because that was perfect for me. And if you want to see the grid while you're working, just one more reminder, if you press G on your keyboard, you'll see the grid. Okay, great. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to enter a new line here. I pressed shift enter on my keyboard for a soft return. So now my text will be over on the left, right with that button. And it leaves me a space to put my image on the other side. I'm going to select add block and we'll pull an image on over here. There we go. That looks centered and fabulous. Awesome. Click this plus sign. And here you can upload a file, select one from the library or browse stock images available in the Squarespace database there. I'm going to go ahead and select a picture that's already on my site. It's going to upload and we're good to go. Now there are a few tricks that you can learn with images that I have in another tutorial video, but for right now, I'll just show you here. If we click that edit option under design, we can choose fill or fit. If you choose fit, it will stretch to fit either horizontally or vertically. If you choose fill, Squarespace will crop that image automatically so it fills the entire shape of the box. And we have the same corner radius options that we had with the actual text background as well. So let's say we want to curve all of these in by maybe 50 pixels. There we go. I'll say 50 PX there. Let's click on our text block, edit that text block, and we can select 50 here as well. Now it matches. Pretty cool, right? So that's how you can recreate this look using layers of other content blocks and the text block background to create a unique layout on your Squarespace website. 
Now, whatever style you decide to go with, just select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. And there you have it, my five favorite text tricks using Fluid Engine Editor inside Squarespace. I have a lot more to teach you about this brand new editing experience, so definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel because I post a brand new video every single week and I want to make sure you catch the latest. If you enjoyed this, give me a like and a comment below and let me know what other kind of things would you like to learn about using Fluid Engine. I've got some fun ideas for things about images and different layouts to recreate, but I'd love to hear from you, so comment below. Thank you so much for watching, and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. To learn more about the fluid editing experience now available in Squarespace, head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash fluid. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash F-L-U-I-D.